<laughs> My name's Philippa Fiebert, and uh, I'm uh, conducting research into the effectiveness of homeopathic treatment for uh, children with behavioural disorders. I used to be a uh, teacher of special needs, and I worked for many years um, in this particular area. One of my posts was working in St George's Hospital with children with behavioural disorders, um, specifically school refusers, and we were a very large body of uh, very well qualified uh, um, academics and uh, practitioners and psychiatrists, and we had four children. <laughs> and um, we were really not able to be very effective. So whilst my own children were small, I trained as a homeopath thinking that I would treat them homeopathically and one of my case studies was a child with um, ADHD and uh, myself and the friend who had referred him and his mother were all totally gobsmacked by the effect that this one remedy Causticum had on this child who had already tried to commit suicide and who was covered in warts and who had destroyed his home and who couldn't read or write and within about a month Basically, all those things had disappeared. This child learned to read or write, and I discovered that there's a very small rubric in the uh, repertory that says inability to read and write in children, and causticum is, I think, single remedy. Um, so I thought this, the, this is more effective in one remedy than anything that I have done in my year, previous years, in my previous um, occupation. So it needs to be used. And when I tried to um, approach educational establishments to see about using it, they didn't want to know. They said there's no evidence, homeopathy doesn't work. So I thought, right, I need to start establishing the evidence. I need to start looking at uh, what works and what doesn't. So I was very lucky to get um, some funding from a Borstal who were looking at preventative measures to stop children ending up in prison. And 43% in a recent trial of prison inmates in Scotland were found to have ADHD, so it's a large uh, uh, risk factor. And so they were interested to support me, and then the Homeopathic Institute, Research Institute came in and uh, matched the funding. So I was able to conduct a case study of 20 children with a diagnosis of ADHD. I approached um, Morag Hears, who did the systematic review of the trials for homeopathy for ADHD, to discuss with her what would be the best method to use, because her recommendation was for observational case series describing how we actually practice to try and establish best methodologies. And so basically on her recommendations, um, I just observe, wanted to treat a series of children and the funding I had allowed me to treat 20 children and to measure their outcomes. So I used a basic uh, measure which is used to demonstrate ADHD symptomatology called the Connor symptomare, sy symptom questionnaire. Um, and I also used MIMOT because I wasn't convinced that the Connors was going to be sensitive enough to capture homeopathic treatment. So they, these patients were filled in the MIMOP questionnaire every six weeks and they filled in the Connors, um, the parents filled in the Connors questionnaire at baseline after six months and after one year. Now, once they'd started um, this process, I realized that I didn't have the tools to analyze the data. So I enrolled on a course, of, a master's course in uh, research methodology in psychology. And um, when I started to do that, they said to me, you need to have a control group. So I subsequently um, enrolled a, a control group in my case series. So it, it, it evolved to become a, a comparative consecutive case series. So then I had 10 children who were not receiving homeopathic treatment, whose um, outcomes were measured at baseline. And they received a friendly visit from me sort of the same duration. I chatted away to them, but I did not give them a homeopathic treatment. And they filled in the same outcome measures, and I measured those up to four months. And then after four months, they were offered homeopathic treatment if they wanted it. So I compared the outcomes between treated and non-treated children for four months, and then I compared the long-term outcome of treated children up to one year.
Statistically, the results were highly significant. The changes from baseline to a year. Uh, and what was interesting was that the children continued to improve. So when you make, look at the differences from six months to a year, they were continuing to improve. However, the most significant results were achieved initially. And there were highly significant differences between the controls and the children receiving homeopathic treatment.